Hello, good evening, and welcome to the Talking Cop. It's Tuesday, the twenty seventh of February. It's me, Gav. It's Emma. It's Shawnee. It's Liverpool ten times winners of the League Cup. We done a reaction show for nearly two hours on Sunday, and people did still gave out, still fucking gave out. Where he is on Sunday night? Where he is yesterday? We were on the piss. All right, that's basically it. We're drunk, so we didn't come on. So we're coming on tonight. Um, we just about me, Emmett's in ribbons. I'm not too bad. Shawnee look fresh as that. Look at him. It's a joke, he is. Um, but Liverpool won Chelsea nil after extra time at Wembley. And um, yeah, this could go anywhere. Anywhere we want. Shawnee, um, I'm going to put it to you straight off the bat. That is the most enjoyable cup final win under Jurgen Klopp. Bar none. I disagree, but... Go on. Give us the bad. one that's more enjoyable. The one I was in Madrid for. Yeah, okay. It's a bigger cup win in Madrid. But all no, the elements no. around that and the performance and everything, I think it's a better cup final. Oh, look. I, 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 what thought, like, literally, this is this is what this man has done to us. He's made us argue about which cup final win was the best. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Yeah. But fucking spoil. Um, it was... Seriously fucking satisfying though, I'll say that much. Um deck stacked against us big big style and um, before kickoff, during kickoff, and after kickoff, um there was a myriad of reasons. Um and then just the ultimate let off. It's fucking brilliant. Um don't listen to any detractors because I will get on to them later. Yeah, yeah, do, yeah just look this way. It, if winning cup finals is the least of my worries this season, then I, we're, we're onto a lovely one. It was fucking, it was great. But I will, I'll, I, I will push back on it being the biggest cup win. There's been so many um, moments, and I'm sure we're going to do a big fucking extravaganza of everything clubs won at the end of the season. Um, but yeah, last year they were all telling us that club was done. And he, this team hadn't got it in them anymore, and we're in a position again where you're winning a you're winning a Carabao Cup final, and then going right straight back in, boys. We've another three jobs to fight for, and it, it's fucking it's high times. Honestly, these are the days, boys. These are the fucking days. They really are. Um, Emma, uh, we went to Liverpool to watch it. Um, I'm delighted we decided to go anyway. We were meant to go and watch Liverpool and Luton, but that got changed, obviously, because of the League Cup final. We went over and watched it. We had a superb weekend between the two of us. But, like, Emma, I'm going to get on to the detractors not later because it's off the wall fucking stupidity from lots and lots of people. And, and, and you can see um, you can see the, the jealousy in the film pouring out of them while they're talking. You can actually see it pouring out of them while they're talking. But, like, Emma... I'm going to get into the game in a bit and I'm going to get into some of the players but let's be honest we're going into this and we, we knew what the lineup would be more or less and we were kind of going we knew where, who we were missing there was all this talk of Salah and Nunes and then late, early in the day it was like no they haven't been seen and the walk around the stadium nothing that is not happening so I think most Liverpool fans went in and went look this team's going to need us um, mm. everyone in the ground give her everything you have everyone at home just fucking cross your fingers and wish the boys do, do themselves justice and, and like Chelsea fans licking their lips or they're missing all these players even though they beat us 4-1 the other week and it just felt like we went into this and we were just kind of what will be will be you know what I mean it's just the way like Shawnee says it's just the way the deck the deck has fallen or, or the, the cards we've been dealt and Liverpool seemed to ride that Emma on the pitch and everything just seemed to ride it like nothing to lose here let's fucking have a right go you see we have something that Chelsea don't have and that's like a soul, I'm gonna call it, they're a soulless club, right? So when the chips are down, their fans go against them. When our chips are down, everybody gets behind them. Um, that that is probably my favorite final that I I actually the day next day couldn't remember any of it. I had to go and start watching videos of it. But at the time, it was one was of the, the most drink. enjoyable. Yeah, no, well, yeah, yeah. which <laughs> which which drink? Um, All of them. There was a lot of it. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh yeah, no, it was it was absolutely it was absolutely brilliant. That LA 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 at the start of the extra time is basically Istanbul's you never walk alone at halftime. Yeah. In, in when the players can hear that. Um 
the, the chips were down, but we, we have a group of players that trust in each other. They're a team. And they know what each one of them is capable of. I know we've spoken loads of times about these, like this, the same football has played down through the ages at, at Liverpool. And these lads, the young lads that came into the squad, knew what would have been an expected of them. And I think that look, an awful lot of that is to do with Klopp. But I think there's also another lad that probably doesn't get a, 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 an awful lot of credit, credit is your man Vita Matos. He's had an awful lot to do with that as well. And it's kind of the progression of the lads into the into the senior squad. But it's, yeah, it's just everybody was pulling in the same direction for everybody. They're, all, they're a team of individuals, Chelsea, if you ask me. Um, and like I said, the, the crowd turns on them. We get behind our crowd going down there. And I can confirm to anybody else, it wasn't fucking speakers. Because you hear that as well. Oh, the speakers at Wembley were really loud. We got behind. We knew that they were going to need that 12th man. I know we always talk about that 12th man. And that's what it was. Everybody were in it together. That just doesn't happen at Chelsea. And it was that's that's what for me what made it so enjoyable because even where we were watching it, like it was just there was that feeling, that buzz that they, they can do it. We just need to get behind them. We were singing, the crowd were singing. It was just it was just unbelievable. Um, and that's what we have that Chelsea don't, and they, I don't think they'll ever have it. Liverpool have had that for for donkey's years, uh, going back to the sixties, seventies. Um, and it's just, it's ingrained within us. It's ingrained within the players as well, within the club, that it's it's all for one and one for all, basically. It's, Shawnee, how much, how much does the team... It's hard to follow up there, what Emmett said, because... Yeah, no, because I, I wanted to ask you, like, what he says we, is, is absolutely spot we, on. Like, but... All very emotional. I was with cousins, brothers, friends, watching the game the other day in the Camden. And 400 and losses in the, in the Camden, I and, when it comes to the end, you kind of think like, and I know a lad, a, a long time friend of mine, who's the only Chelsea fan I've known, Mihola, and this is predating the Roman days. Um, and look, I'm good friends with man. I wouldn't consider him like a dickhead. He just, he was, he's always been a Chelsea fan. And he said to me, do you know what? If we had been playing anyone else the way today and the game was going that way, I would have been licking my lips thinking, we'll fucking beat these here. He goes, but no matter what, he said, I just knew that this fucking Liverpool, he said, no, he's got a record years gone by saying he fucking, he hates Liverpool and I hate Chelsea. Simple as that. But he turns around and he goes, it just, it felt like that when Keller was making saves. And in fairness to me, brother Paddy and Gizmo, my head was gone watching the games. I'm thinking, fucking Stuart Cabinet, the terrible decisions, players going down injured, looking on the bench, kind of thinking, fucking hell, what do we have, who's going to win this for us? And I'm thinking, these cunts always won. And it was all going in their favour. And then Emmett says to LA, LA, LA. But I think the crowd smelled blood. I think I think, I think, think the crowd smelled blood. We have a few chances early on in, in extra time. And they just stopped playing. They didn't play football at all from 90 minutes on. And we were on the bounds of our arse for the last, I'd say, 25 minutes of, of in regular time. And you can see the lift that gives them. But... That, that comes from, like, uh, Emmett sp spot on when he says Vida Matas, but, like, I haven't heard his name mentioned on a single podcast or anything else this whole weekend. And, like, imagine being Alex Ingletop going to bed on Sunday night. Yeah. Not knowing that <laughs> what you want and what you've put in place. Yeah, it's and a picture of 11 of them, I think, after the game. They're involved in the, yeah. they're involved in the fourth team yeah. squad. And James McConnell is... Letting the ball roll across his body in the hundred and fourth minute of extra time at Wembley, and playing the ball out like he's fucking prime buskets, and you can just tell that the crowd were like, "These kids are grand." We looked no different when them that can swallow you up going out in front of ninety thousand in a in a league cup final. Your man Jaden Dans has played about a half an hour's football, senior football, before the other day, and he comes on and he's sticking it up to these lads who. Chelsea played 50, 60 million for And it just comes down to it. They don't care. Their players don't care. The mercenaries all signed up on eight-year contracts on fucking huge wages. Look at the very start of the game when the melee kicks off in the corner. Sterling's walking down, picking the shot that was cold. Walking away from the melee going, I don't give a fuck about yeah. This doesn't mean that to me. And it fucking meant everything to them players. And 
I don't care if it's the fucking Johnston's paint trophy, the Papa John's Cup. That what that was on Sunday was a couple of new lads coming in the door. Diaz, Gagbo, who probably came in last year thinking this is a fucking brilliant side and we're going to win loads of trophies. And last year, it doesn't go our way. And then you have McAllister, you have McConnell, you have Bradley, you have um, your fucking... Clark. Clark, yeah, Clark, sorry. Look, I'm running, I can't even name them fucking all. That's how ridiculous don't it is. don't know their names. Don't even know how to. They all, Never heard they of them. All, <laughs> they all, and Endo, Endo as well, like, who all feel part of something. That's a connection with the crowd, made, And, it, like... It was Klopp 2.0 the whole time and it's Liverpool 2.0 and you want to be up your fucking tits if you're a manager and you don't want to take over this team because they're a group of fucking savages. They're a gang of savages. That's exactly what they are. They fucking dug it. And look, you you bet your bollocks Klopp's created a siege mentality for the rest of the season. But you bet your bollocks they would have been listening to all the shit that was talked on all of these fucking... The usual, the usual avenues, you know what I mean? Before kickoff, join like the whole show, and they just dug it out. Uh, it's like it, so often I've been torn around proud to say, like, fucking hell, I support Liverpool. But then I'm just going to think, I feel sorry for any cunt who supports anyone else because they'll never, and I don't give a fuck what anyone says, they will never understand what it's like. They will never understand what it's like. Fucking idiots on whatever the air turn around saying it's only this, it's only that. Tell them lads that yeah. in town. Now, there's been serious fucking fires lit in bellies there over the week. And Club turned around, come around and done an interview the other day saying, The only reason I'm gone is because I know it's going to be okay. And it's just for that vindication. We won trophies before Club, we win them at the Club. The one thing that's constant is what Emma said earlier, the soul of this club, what this club, what this club is built on. We've had times, we've had shy times, we've had some fucking really good times. I'm spoiled. I'm fucking so beyond spoiled. We're sitting here arguing about which cup final is the most satisfying win in the club era. Like, do you understand how fucking ridiculous that sounds? Yeah, I know it is. It does sound ridiculous, but you see, every, oh, every I said... On the table, I've, most satisfying Liverpool win ever? Probably not. The most proud I've been after Liverpool final? Absolutely. I, I couldn't be prouder of that gang of players. And then again, Virgil coming out going, the first one I've won is skipper. Big man, people turning around saying, John, I don't know whether he's a leader, he's a little bit this, he's a little bit that. He's the fucking best that's ever done it. Simple as. Well... I, I I I do think like when when I thought about the game. Well, I didn't really think about the game afterwards. I was on the gag or whatever. But the f- yesterday morning, thinking about it, I was like, you know, there's League Cup wins there. There's FA Cup wins. There's World Cup Cup wins. There's all this. There's the Champions League win. And but when I when I the reason I put that to you at the very start is because when I looked at it, I went, the players were missing. All right. The it's it's at Wembley. It's ninety thousand people, and the and look. I think if if we'd have, if we'd have brought in, if we had say five missing yesterday, and if we just have five backup players were playing, right? I go, that's a great win. You're doing well, the squad. But this was beyond that. This is this is beyond what you like. Um, but let's be honest. Going into the season, we don't, we're not thinking Dan's. We're not thinking McConnell. We're not thinking Bradley. We're not thinking Clark. You know what I mean? We're not thinking any of this. We simply aren't, and we're actually no. thinking. If Kelleher doesn't play this season, brilliant because it means Allison is fit all season. So it just when I when I factored it all together, I thought to myself, there mightn't be a better one. Simply when you roll it all together, there's bigger ones. There's absolutely bigger ones. But I actually don't think there's a better performance in a final from the Organ Club. And I include the Champions League final of that. Because we're not great in 2019 Champions League. Yeah, performance final. is different, yeah. Performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, but, but that, like, that, I just that, think our best performance in a final like that that, yeah. that can't be questioned. My, 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 my biggest, my biggest thing on it, my biggest thing on it is, um, my my biggest thing on it is, is that when you get to these stages of this cup, this cup in particular, you get lads that might have played up to the quarter final stage and then they kind of disappear. And you bring the big lads in, and that didn't happen. What actually happened was these lads probably didn't start as much in the in the earlier rounds. From what I can remember, we were quite strong, and then yeah. they just started to gather pace as it goes on, and. I just loved the way the team went out yesterday, right? And 
yeah, we're missing a lot of players, and you have got Bradley starting, and Elliot's still young, but he's a hundred appearances, so it's not really. I really wouldn't put Elliot in there, but you have. And what happens is they they come on. They don't come on like with ten minutes to go, and you know, oh, we're, we're losing. Give them a game, or we're winning. Try give them five. He brings them on in crucial parts of the game and says, "You go on and you play." And like you said, McConnell's taking the ball off Kelleher. Two lads encroaching on him, and you think he's going to pop it back to him now. No, just drops the shoulder into midfield and just moves through midfield. I think the goal actually comes from that. The corner for the goal comes from that. Because he turns and plays and, and keeps playing. And get and it's just... It's shot by Clark, I think. Yeah, it's just... For the corner. I, ju I just think it was the perfect recipe yesterday of Liverpool supporters turning up. They're way better than Chelsea fans anyway. But them turning up, looking at that team and going, right, there's two options here. One, we sit here all nervous and wonder, can fucking by some miracle get away with it? Or can we go absolutely apeshit for two plus hours and see where it takes us? And they took the second option. They went fucking bananas for two hours. And the, the you could see the fucking players like looking at the crowd going, yeah, we're up for this. We're absolutely up for this. Don't forget Quanta, John Nolan's as well. Of course, Quanta. It's just so many Quanta, to fucking name. Quanta's forced action in the game is ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. he's stupid. doing fucking FIFA skills in the box. Like, it's, it's yeah, stupid. <laughs> If Carl Will is doing that, who I rate does that, like, you know what I mean? That fucking, it's all over. But he just gets the ball and just checks inside and just a little shimmy and then just plays out. And I'm I'm, telling you, I'm, I'm there shitting me jocks in the fall watching this and I'm thinking, he's not panicking. Why am I panicking? He's a fucking 20 year old yeah. who's just strolling around with the cigars out. Yeah. And that's what happens when you're playing against fucking pl players like Virgil. And here, you're going on about players who are injured. The, there was the players who weren't even with the squad able to fucking celebrate. Yeah. No sign of Jota, Alisson, Thiago, not around. Not even yeah. in the question. The camera yeah. panel, all the boys on the bench. And that's <coughs> the thing. Like that. I'm, I'm fucking so happy because, look, I've been a player who was playing when I was younger. You probably get dropped on the day of the cup final and your team wins it. And, yeah, come on. It doesn't feel the same. I'm telling you that now for free. Like, that, that's happened to me. Um, but to see how happy all the rest of the boys were, and Mo going around shepherding the boys off, going here, get your pictures, well, and you enjoy it. Like, like that's the, it's fucking silly that you can turn around. Like, you can't even turn around and say it's fucking career defining because Kelleher scores the last minute, the last penalty <laughs> yeah. shoot. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, Fucking silly! Yeah. What, what that man has he actually done. has such a game. Yeah, he actually has such a game on Sunday, right? That you look at him and go, "Yeah," but you were scoring penalties two years you know, ago. You've literally gone down in my estimation. Is that, like, you know? is that, yeah, is that <laughs> career defining performance for Virgin? No, he's classes over in Madrid. He's fucking unbelievable. He's so many other games where he's just excellent. Now, but look, he steps up and gets the win. Like this, this is what this this is what we're all about at the moment. You don't realize how fucking privileged you are, and if you spent last year. Pissing and moaning out yeah, and fucking moaning about someone like Endo coming in. I'd rather win fucking one trophy with a Wataro Endo than ten with little wankers like Moses Coisado. Well, I want, I want to, I want to, I want to get on to them in a bit, and that, right? And that's just, I know we will get on, but that's what, that's what I'm saying. Give me the lads who it means fucking Marte who left it all out on the pitch there on Saturday, on Sunday, and walked off as if to say you're at the game bullied there. By a fella who was playing for Stuttgart last year, yeah. as Jurgen Klopp wound around to a 31 year old in an empty dressing room when he was brought in, when nobody fucking wanted him. And I mean, everyone was going, What the fuck, I live up here? And I mean, everyone. For at the, the initial, everyone was going, What the fuck? Turn around to a 31 year old going, We need your legs. We need your legs. Jurgen Klopp, that video on the inside, fucking. The, yeah, the, you're the, the only one that was going to defend, yeah. basically. We yeah. need your legs. This is going to be built on you. And that fella feels fucking 20 foot tall. He leaves the fucking stadium in a boot and a crutch and he's walking around the AXA today like there's nothing wrong with him. Him. <laughs> He must have a few cans slipped into the beer or something. Now, this is a team of fucking savages. But can, I read, can I read one out from Conspiracy Cray? And he tries, to, he tries to mask some of the language, but I know what you mean, so I'm going to read it out because we don't give a fuck. Uh, he says, <laughs> communal flesh uh, lights of the week. Don't know what that means. Housen, Rio, Pep, Chilwell, all of them can fuck off. They're bitter cunts. That's Ingle Toft's work and he should be proud of the quadruple chasing piss boiling reds. Emma. A fleshlight, just so you know, is a self-pleasurer for a male. 
Oh, was it? Yeah, no, <laughs> well, yeah I, I think... Um, speak, speaking from experience... Be harsh on, on, on no, no. Fleshlights, because communal fleshlights have some sort of purpose. They're just a gang of fucking wankers. Well, I've they. learned something there now today because I didn't know what the fuck that was. Emma, it's, 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 the, it's the, the correct term for a, a wanker, basically. Okay, right, nice. Um, Emma, anyway, let's talk some players because I love talking about these players, right? And I think they go in on, on like just riding that wave, go for it, you know. And there was a there was a there was a comment there, and I actually took it off for that super chat, and I want to get it back up. Um, I will get it back up now. Um, and basically, it was uh, sorry, Wayne said Pe- Pep Linders was seen shouting at the young lads to play a game, play the ball. Don't be afraid, okay? So let's go through. Let's go through a few of them right now. I could nearly go through the whole team. We've mentioned Keller. I think he was fantastic, and everything he done, he was fantastic. He makes he makes a couple. He makes two. Well, one the block in the in the first half, which is Allison all over. Like it's just literally like Allison, and then the same again in the second half when um, what's his face goes through. Um, the blonde, no, the blondy fella, Gallagher. Oh, Gallagher. Gallagher, who. I'd say Gallagher and Enzo Fernandez, by the way, are looking around that team going, what the fuck am I doing playing with these mongos? Honest to God, because Gallagher gives her everything and Fernandez is a level above them all, but he must have a pain in his bollocks. Anyway, we, we've mentioned Kelleher. He's two brilliant saves and he's rock solid through. Punches when he needs good good distribution. <clears throat> but Connor Bradley again comes on, plays right back. No, no issue. None whatsoever. Um, big bad Ben Chilwell tries to start on him. Everyone piles in trying to punch. Joe Gomez just goes in and grabs three of them, as if to say, "Now you keep her up now, and it's gonna kick off." I'll send them. They I'll all send shit them. themselves. I'll send Canate wrapped up yeah, as well. I'll send Canate <laughs> in here. and We'll see what happens. But where was the Chelsea back up? There was none. There, there wasn't. There, 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 there wasn't. Said it. Yeah, no, sure. Uh, Sterling was trying to get away from him as quick as he could, but, but Sterling but when look, knows when, not to mess with Gomez anyway. Just yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, <laughs> but but you. But you look at Bradley, then he has to go and play right side of the attacker. You know, plays that 70 minutes. And if we go across the back four, even, you know, I thought Canati was outstanding. Virgil, like, just outstanding. Robertson. Robertson wasn't outstanding, but done nothing wrong for me. He just mm. done his job. And he seemed to be the cover man all the time, which which was grand. But when you, like, starting with the back end, like, all right, Chelsea here a post. You're always going to get a chance. They do get one or two chances, which which the defend, which the keeper looks after. But overall, in everything they've done and marshalling everything around them, I thought the back four were excellent. Yeah, unbelievable. And like like we said, like we're we're kind of near now. We're not forgetting Bradley because we're talking about the likes of Clark and McConnell and, and all that. Like Bradley's only a young as well. Like do you know what I mean? And to to be able to change position. Like that to go right wing. Now I know he. I think he started. He, he started as a winger initially, and then he was put to, to right back. But um, the biggest, like the biggest state, the biggest kind of stage that you can to do it on. Like there's many a player that has rocked up to a Wembley final and absolutely shit the bed. Um, and there's players that have played for Liverpool and never won a thing. So for people to be poo pooing this whole, it's only the League Cup, means a hell of a lot more to these boys. But Bradley's just phenomenal. Like we've we've said it, he saved us what 40, 50 million. He's he's unbelievable. And I think it's Chilwell. Chilwell shit the bed again like he did. Uh, I think Bradley made an absolute show of him. He at gets whipped Anfield. at half time at Anfield, doesn't he? Um and that's what he I think Chilwell was having a go at all the young fellas, trying to wind them up. Yeah. But our lads just like what somebody said there. Pep just said, "Play, play your game of ball. Play your football. Don't be worried." And you can see it. Just things can go a couple of ways when these kids, we'll call them. Come, I, I'm not even sure whether it's right to be calling them kids. They're coming on. Players, experienced players, can avoid getting them into the game. Van Dijk was just constantly playing the ball to McConnell. He had no worries about playing the ball to him. Um, players can go hiding. None of them went hiding. Uh, McConnell, even when he played in Norwich in the lead up to it, uh, on the FA Cup, sorry, it was uh, he always wanted the ball. It's great. These kids, sorry, I'm not saying that again, kids, these lads, we'll call them, they just want to play football. And they're all absolutely excellent at playing football. Um, none of them go hiding. I thought Clark 
But now we started on Bradley, but Clark, when he came on, he was buzzing around everywhere, wanting the ball all the time as well. Like we've kind of landed on our feet here. We've 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 had kids come through or lads come through the academy before and maybe not shine. I think we've hit the absolute jackpot here with the, these group of lads coming through. And Bradley is a shoe in now for starting games for me. Um, I don't want to say put Trent in the midfield, but are we that bothered about how long it's going to take him to come back? I think we're we're golden at right back with Bradley playing there. I think if I think I actually think right. I think if Bradley started ten more league games, if he went back a bit further, I think he's a shoe in for young player of the year in the Premier League. I genuinely mm. believe that the form he's in. I think he'd probably end up. Well, with, I think that voting is already done on that. Yeah, I know, I know, but I think he'd end up. I, yeah, they did it early enough, but I think he'd end up with probably yeah. twenty league appearances by the end of the season, somewhere around that. Yeah. I think if he got thirty in, the chances are he'd be right up there with a young player of the year. That that's yeah, how that's how good year. that's how good he's been. Before we, we before we, we we touch a bit more on, on the on the yeah, younger well, lads, I, like, come on. Before you got off, Bradley. How funny was it? Turned around the post match count. The young lads did really well. And they come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's about five minutes older than them. Oh, <laughs> and, then he, and then he he's, and he tried to say fucking, and then he stopped himself, <laughs> which is amazing yeah. as well. That was but yeah, yeah. but Shani, I want to I want to give uh, like you know I feel so sorry for Graven Birch. Um, you know, I'll get on to Chelsea as a whole in a minute, but I feel so sorry for him because I think he was having a really good game. I think he, him and McAllister ahead of end, I thought were excellent in closing people down, uh, picking their pockets, getting Liverpool going, moving the path. He was he was really good grabbing birds before he goes off. But you know, and we and we we have got Diaz. I think he ran is ran himself into the ground. Diaz. He was a threat all day against. He was a really good player in my opinion. Gusto. I think he had Gusto all over the fucking place though, um, for parts of it. And I think Gusto's nerves were really at him in the game. <clears throat> and Gakbo Gakbo tries to knit it all together but I want to give a mention to somebody that we a lot of people shudder when he starts games um, and it's Harvey Elliott um, yeah. I think honest to God um, how he was still running as hard in the 118th minute as he was in the fourth it was a joke and this is the fella that played during the week against Luton and um, the whole game I think as well but the thing about him um, for me on Sunday show, well, he, what? 20. 20. 20. Yeah, he's 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's 20. he's 101 appearances for Liverpool now at 20 years of age. But Shani, the thing for me in this game was he 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 starts up front on the on the on the right hand side. He ends up coming a bit deeper as the game goes on because of who we put on and stuff like that. And he kind of I think he nearly goes in and helps a couple of the midfielders by saying it's not a drop off a little bit and help you here. But he, he never he very rarely loses a Shani. He walks hard, he gets stuck in, he wins tackles, he presses some great balls, one to the back post for Virgil, he has a good chance, um, one part of extra time I think, and then the other part of extra time, the header, I just thought, for a fella that when he starts, people think, ah, you know what, he's, he's an impact player, he actually made an impact for 120 minutes there, Shani, and he has to be given um, a lot of credit, a lot of credit for it. Yeah, he never stopped, and he, as the game goes on, I actually think, um, his quality improves and his final ball. He's literally at the heart of anything attacking we do from the second half onwards into extra time. He's creating chances and he's clipping balls into the back stick. Nearly gets one in the second half. Um, Elliot's, Elliot's been, ha, is having a really, really good season, in my opinion. And we, we spoke about a couple of weeks ago about this role in the team really suiting him, but he actually found himself in a position on Sunday where when the chips were down and it came to, as anyone who's familiar with American football, Bill Belichick calls it winning time. This is a time for playing and there's a time for winning. And winning time is the most important time, obviously. And when it came to winning time, Harvey Elliott would have been looking around the pitch going, OK, th this, is, this is on me. A little bit to get something going here because fucking Luis Diaz has ran his bollocks off. I think Gagbo gone off at that stage. And yeah, Diaz Jay is on at that stage, yeah. yeah. And he's thinking to himself, it's up to me here to kind of get a spark on. He's a good good couple of chances in the game. But um, yeah, fucking unreal. And it just matters to him and he cares because he's he was a Liverpool fan as a young fella. And he's at the heart of a lot of the celebrations. I don't know whether you notice it. He's the one floating around with the selfie stick and right into it. Like, so 
yeah, I'm fucking delighted for that kid. You know that because th- with such adversity early on in his career, just when his Liverpool career is about to skyrocket, and he has a really good start to the season, uh, the year before last, gets a really bad injury, and um, he's probably probably thinking to himself, "How come I'm not Curtis Jones this year? How come how come that's not me kicking on and I'm really putting my stamp on this team?" But again, that that's a career defining performance for Harvey Elliott's so very early in his Liverpool career. He's 20 and he's going to put so many fucking medals on the table for this club. I've no doubt no doubt about it. Um, I was massively wrong to doubt that kid at any stage. He's a kid. You forget that he's 20. He's 20. You said he's played 101 games. That's seriously some goal. Um, and just Klopp's faith that I'm being kind of repaid with the way he performed on, on Sunday, he was exemplary. He was fucking brilliant, I have to say. And it's it showed that there can only be kind of one man of the match because he'd probably be fourth or fifth in it because there's just so many good Yeah, there was because I've, I've, heard, I've heard loads of people go, like, you know, you hear, well, who's your man of the match? And, yeah. Um, or player of the match, as they like to call it now, which is weird. But, um, look, I had Endo and people I spoke to said, no, Van Dijk, Kelleher. Yeah, Elliot um, got a mention. Yeah, Endo yeah. Akela for me. Look, and Van Dyke, I can see it because he was fucking excellent. Kanate was excellent. I like getting off Elliot, like Bobby Clark comes on. He's fucking so good. Like, really, really good. And I got, like, going back to Elliot and the young lads, like, something that I remember watching a, uh, an interview with Roy Kane years ago, right now. Obviously, Roy Keane is not in the Liverpool parish, but he, people forget how good of a player he was. And he talks about he talked about when he makes his debut for Nottingham Forest at Anfield for 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 Brian Clough. And Brian Clough said, "What? Like he said, he just tell me three things: get your touch right, pass the ball, and run. That's all you have to do." And Keane said, "I literally live my whole career by that mantra." And you could see the likes of McConnell and Clark just to point out the other day. Walk hard, make sure the force touches right, and move the ball. And they found themselves in positions where they were overrunning Chelsea. And they that, that's why Chelsea turned around and goes, Hold on, if if we if we keep if we come out here and keep playing, these little passes are gonna run all over us. Because it's not a case where Klopp's just bringing on lads for their legs. These fellas have quality and they'll cut us up. Well Klopp said it. Klopp says <clears throat> and he's quoted as saying at a certain point in the game, and I can't even, I'm, I must look up the minutes they come on, but at a certain point, we 87 knew. 87 yeah, was, we, was uh, yeah, the later yeah, ones. Right. He says. <clears throat> I think Bobby Clark comes on a little bit earlier. <clears throat> yeah, he said, but Klopp is quoted and he says, we knew at some stage during this game, we were going to need, um, we were going to need fresh legs. He said, we had fresh legs, but the problem was they were young. But he follows that up with, yes, they were young, but they know what they have to do. They're not here for just no reason. When they go on the pitch, they know how to, they, they basically know how to behave and how to play. And basically, and, and I don't think it was a case of don't go out and do anything stupid. I think it's a case of the mentality that's in what you consider air 19 first team players or whatever amount of them there is, has to be in you as well. So whether you're playing a fucking under 18s game on Saturday or a 23s game on Wednesday, if you turn up at Anfield on Saturday, you have to switch on to air mentality that's being put through this club and put onto this force team. And when you go out there, and I think the biggest mentality thing was when the, it kicked off a little bit. You're seeing Gakbo go in, you see Canati go in, you see Gomez go in. Bradley's not backing down to nobody. You know what I mean? McAllister goes in and decides he wants to take a man bleeding. Um, Nicholas Jackson he wants to bleed and ha- have a punch up with him and he keeps going him it's actually Virgil has to come in and tell Jackson fuck off away from him you know and when Virgil speaks they all kind of listen they all disperse but that's the that's the thing that that's the whole thing about this and you know you've heard people saying oh the average age is this and the average fuck off with the average age the, t- the, the thing isn't about the average age the thing is about the cost of these players what age they are and the cost of them Right, yeah, the average age is bullshit because you've Enzo Fernandez in there and you've Moises Saicedo in there, and I think they're probably both about twenty three years of age somewhere around that, and they cost two hundred and twenty five million quid between them. Air two lads come on, they cost us fuck all, and they've about six games between them. 
you know what I mean? And that's where it is. It's not yeah, about average average age. I think is, is yeah, the, it's, it's not about average age. It's about the lack of experience of those players that come in. Emma, can I can I ask you, um, just on Chelsea, because I think it's an honestly, I I just sacked Pochettino on Sunday night after he after it was emerged that he came out and said we decided yes. uh, uh, the group decided it would be better if we played for penalties because that I'm sorry. If if Jurgen Klopp came out on Sunday night, if we lost the cup final one nil in a reverse kind of way, um, to what happened, and Jurgen Klopp said, "Ah, oh, well, look, we just thought maybe we get the penalties," I'd have been up the fucking walls, fuming. Like that is an outrageous thing to say. Yeah, so I heard somebody else say that he was he had a tactics board or something out before the game and everything, showing what way they're going to try and press Liverpool or something. He just. He's an odd to me. He's an oddball. Like, to, but I said that to you, and someone said that to me, and I said it to you. I was like, how can he get away with saying that they were trying to play for penalties? I Chelsea were scared. Chelsea were scared of losing to that team, so weakened that they they started retreating in in uh, in uh, the uh, extra time. But that's he should have been. I think he should have been sacked a long time ago. Alone after that, but that should have been the final nail in his coffin. That's ridiculous. Carry on. Like like you like we've said, or like Neville said, the blue billion pound butlers, like it, it's it's exactly what it is. That's a like if that's your manager and that's his attitude, what what way does that feed onto the pitch? Like it's just it's a defeatist attitude. And it's one thing that I don't think we'll we we'll ever have. It's he probably lost the game there and then when he decided to play like, like that. But you see, if but I'm a Chelsea player, if I'm a Chelsea, hold on a second, if I'm, one second, yeah, but one second, if I'm if I'm a Chelsea player going out there at the weekend, right? Setting aside, setting aside the team Liverpool have to put out, Liverpool are still a really good side, right? We, we we've mm-hmm. seen our Anfield a couple of weeks ago against Chelsea, but if I'm a Chelsea player going out there, right, and 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 we're playing and we're nil all, and I'm looking and I'm saying to myself, right, okay. You know, it's nil all. We haven't been the best. They probably had the better of it, but we got back into it. You know, all that sort of shit, right? If you're a if you're a Chelsea player, right? Now, just let me just let me read this out here, right? Just let me read this out here, right? So Chelsea, right? As the game goes on, and Kunku comes on in the sixty seventh minute, he's about fucking sixty million quid's worth, right? Bobby Clark comes on in response for us, right? Then we bring on Simakas McConnell, Jaden Dance, right? Okay. Then they bring on Madueke, Mudrick. They, that's them two they bring on. Now, if I, and 90 minutes, Mudrick comes on, right? For Nicholas Jackson. All these players that are on the pitch for Chelsea. If I'm a Chelsea player and my manager is saying to me, and we've, we, we've, we're have we all this huge assembled squad, and they're bringing on Jaden Dans, McConnell, Bobby Clark, Quanzel to a lesser extent, right? Simicast, fair enough. If he's telling me to play for penalties when these are putting on young players that don't play first team football for Liverpool and we're walking around as 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 million pound footballers, I would be looking at my manager going, he is, uh, like, his head's gone. There's no point. Because if you get it to another big game in a year's time, is he going to do this again? You know what I mean? And that's where I just couldn't get over. All these players come on the pitch. But, all but they're all value. attacking players as well. That you've yeah, but all this value, and he's basically saying to them, just play for penalties. We play for penalties. So he want, he basically in his head thought they have more youngsters on the pitch that aren't used to this than us. So we just play for penalties. Why didn't he just go and play the fucking game? <laughs> you know what I mean? If they have more, more youngsters on the pitch that aren't used to this, why didn't he just go and play it and, and put pressure on them and see if they could deal with it? I, I just, Shani, am I, I don't know. Maybe I'm overreacting to this, but honestly, if Pochettino is my manager and... Um, if if Pochettino's Liverpool manager and he turns around after that after a game like that and says that I want them out the door ASA fucking P because that's that attitude is just beyond the joke. Yeah, he's on borrowed time, I'd imagine. Fucking Roman would have sent him to the gill lag long ago. Never would really he fucking forget about like they uh, bottle jobs. Yeah, like what can you say? They, they can't afford to sack him. No, that's yeah. well. He doesn't have a huge contract. I think he's. Yeah, I, I, think he's like, I just. I. I was baffled by their approach in extra time, and I can understand that they were probably leggy in that. But like, it's fucking. Like, but what do you expect? Like, who there cares about the club? Let's be honest. 
Yeah. And no, honestly, yeah. who get, like years ago when they were winning everything, you had Lampard and you Terry and you Lampard, all these. Lampard, you Terry, yeah. yeah. There was a there was a few lads there, a bit of carried like Aspelaquida when we played him in the final a couple of years ago. Kid, like he he was fucking as they say proper chelts. Like did if they've no does he, like I, looking at the team. Yeah, man, Gallagher, you'd argue. I, they're trying to fuck him off. The I know, yeah, I know, but the, he cares. I'm just saying, uh, they don't him. care about him. But no, I think I think he's a, I think he's a really that's what it came player. down to in the end, and that's what it came down to in the end, and just I don't know. The Chelsea are going back to what they were pre Roman, and, and that's literally just fucking that middle ball with money, that the small time, the plastic flags not allowed before kick off. I fucking hate them. I can't stand them. As much as the next, and the show that the fans come away <coughs> when they saw in Lavia and they saw in Suicido ahead of us, and again, I wouldn't try it for the fucking world. Well, I have to be I honest with you. you. I've seen I've seen Suicido play for them now half a dozen times. Yeah, and I now I, I've watched them at Brighton quite a few times, and I love them. Um, and at the World Cup, I love them, and I've watched them, and he just looks to me like he's look he looks like a player going through the motions. There's no, there's no bite in him. There's no burst of pace to get away from anyone in midfield. There's no, there's nothing technical about him. He just seems to be just plodding around, getting the ball and just going, yeah, move around to someone here. Yeah. And you know, it's mad to look. Lavia hasn't played. I don't think he's played a game for them. He might have played one or two, but hasn't played. Yeah, but he was injured again. Like, he's played thirty two minutes for them. Is what Lavia has played for them. Thirty two minutes, and then you go back. Then you look at airs, and I'm not look. Everyone likes big signs, and if, if Saucedo would sign for Liverpool, I would have been over the moon. We done a podcast when the fee was agreed, and we were over the moon. Um, maybe just maybe he's realised what the fuck have I done here? But then you look at then you look at air lads, and you look at McAllister, um, and not so much grabbing bets was off, but you look at McAllister and you look at Endo, Endo in particular, like getting in, winning ball, fucking physical, winning headers, blocking stuff off, and then when he got the ball at his feet, he was ghost. He, he ghosted by Saucedo at one stage, right? And he wasn't he even in full fight. Well. He bounced he off, bounced but, there, but there was another one where he just got the ball midfield, looked at Saucedo and went, I'm just going that way. And he went that way, and Saucedo looked like he was running in play in quicksand. Couldn't get near him. And But the thing was, yeah. we were breaking beyond them and then playing football. And you're probably right. How many of them care? They're all sitting there. He's turned into a bit of a hatchet man, hasn't he? Yeah, because, but they, but they turn into the hatchet man because they can't keep up with the pace. That's exactly, what happens. Yeah, yeah. When exactly, you can't keep yeah. up, you start swinging. No, no, but I'm not, I'm not even meaning this game. Like in other games as well, he's had a few. He looks to me like he's not tackles. fit. He looks like he's going through the motions and he looks like, ah, look, who gives up Alex? Like I'm on all this fucking money now and, you know, I'm on me 250, 300 grand a week. It's what I always wanted. I took that picture with at the back of the car with the Chelsea jersey on. Everyone thinks I love them. This is great. Um, but We've all been on holidays. They yeah. all wear different jerseys every day of the week. Yeah. I'm sure there's a picture of them in an I just AC think, Milan jersey as well. Yeah, I just think it's I just think it's um I just think it was chalk and cheese, the attitude of both teams and the both managers. I just could not get over um what he came out with after that game. Um look it's it's a it's a great it's a great win, it's a great trophy win. Um, you know, there is a couple of injuries there. Well and those popping around the place now he seems all right grabbing we, we, we're not going to hear on but that looked a really really bad one um, I'm saying today it's not as bad as it could have been oh well that that's good that's good um but he said it's uh, like damage the ligaments but shouldn't be too long said yeah we'll have, we'll have, fingers crossed a couple of weeks and we get him back because we need to start pulling fellas but i think sob was like getting back asap is huge now um with what's going on in midfield but um like just touching on that challenge on, on Graven Birch, like, Shani, I thought there was no VAR in the game. When that tackle went in and there was no foul call, no nothing, I was like, what the fuck is going on here? It's our VAR and then five minutes later they're checking the Raheem Sterling thing with VAR. I was like, there fucking is VAR. Like, how have they not done something here? Your man had no control over that game either. Your man Cavan, isn't it? No, he, not from early. Not from early. Um, and Klopp lets him know where Klopp, Klopp is fucking gone mad. I don't think he shakes his hand after. No, He's had enough no. of him. Um, well, they, I think quite say that about, I'd say about 11 or 12 fouls in the game. He did end up as well, didn't he? He did end up. He both he end up. Where end up. The one that he no, had. no, but he get, he's, he's the reason why end was in a boot as well, was he not? No. I thought, yeah, look, he, he, he throws himself into a couple, but that one there should have been, VAR have to look at that and go, you might want to go back and look at this one. 
But it's the like it's literally the fucking textbook doing of a player. Yeah. Put leave him or not. Look away. And yeah. fucking he and hang exactly your leg out there, right on down and down the back of the exactly calf. He knew exactly what he was doing. Yeah. He knew exactly what he was doing. And that's that Gav, I'm not turning this into a fucking referee thing. I'm I'm really not because it's just the standard. It's the standard that we should come to expect um of the PG MOL or whatever the fuck it's called. Um it's just awful and it's week after week where you're kind of going this, that, and the other. And again, like to get the day before there's a sending off in the Brighton game for a challenge that's the exact same Billy Gilmore. So like again, like they will frame this whatever way they need to to sort of um to justify the decisions being made in the game by the Anfield. It was fucking shocking. He didn't even give a fell. Yeah, but that's he the did. thing. Yeah, like, and, and the fun and the fun and, thing and is, regardless of whether it's intentional or not, it's it's a foul. It's a foul. Yeah, it's a foul. And it's yeah. 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 It's, so it's intentional or not. It's <laughs> it's like when a player has to go off on a stretcher. How can you say that he hasn't put the the players yeah. well being at risk? Like, the on the head there. Harry Kane is a con for it. Harry Kane, it, Harry Kane has done it loads of times. That, that back and in thing that he used to do. You're looking away and you're going over the ball and you're going, and he knew exactly what he was doing. He knew exactly it's, what he was doing. Kieran says, Did you just hear get Dermot Gallagher on Cabinet in the final? Clueless, my ears were bleeding. I haven't listened no, to Dermot Gallagher I talking about I won't, I couldn't. I just couldn't because the mental uh, gymnastics. Did Pochettino say something on Friday though about the refereeing? Mm. He made but, some comment about, about the referee. Hey, Hope's boy into the whole club farewell. Thing. Club, yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so Chris Golan says, Lads, according to Sky, he was looking away. So you say, though. Uh, yeah, yeah he, that's literally the fucking hallmark of that's, the challenge. That's the, that's the biggest telltale sign. When you try something there and look away as if to go, oh, I just won't even look while I'm doing this. Um, it was it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but Klopp, Klopp wasn't happy. Um, it was a foul. And I can't... I wouldn't have minded if they come on and went VAR have checked it. Um, and it's not a red card offence. And I don't think they can go back and give me yellow anyway. I'd have been fine with that, but there was nothing, absolutely nothing on it. Anyway, before we go, can we talk about the fume and all the stuff pouring out of people? Because I seen a clip today of some fella on off the ball. I don't know his name. Um, I'm presuming he's one of the hosty fellas. He was sitting there with a mic in front of him. And he seemed to be in the middle of the room. And honest to God, I've never seen someone so upset at Liverpool winning the trophy in all my life, right? Um Basically, basically, and, and he's not alone. He, there's loads of people out there basically saying, ah, it's not that big of an accomplishment. Sure, if Liverpool, when you know he'd won it last year, it was a Mickey Mouse Cup. Um, that wasn't really anything. And, and the guys beside him are like, yeah, but you have to look at the context of the t- players yeah. that have missing and the players that they bring on. He was like, yeah, okay, yeah, good win, good cup win. Yeah, yeah, okay, fair enough. Good cup win, well done. And I was like, holy fuck. Like, yeah, but you well, might as well be watching the fucking WWE. <laughs> is it, is it, is it, is it is it only us that does this to people? Like, genuinely, like, I've, I, look, I know loads of fans of different clubs, and I've I had a few of them on to me, United, uh, Leeds, and they all went on, and I went, fucking brilliant, that. Like, in fairness, it was fucking brilliant. The way they just put that team out, lashed a load of young on, and still went for it, and got a deserved winner. Fair fucks to them. But why do people just have to, they can't, are well, we the only, you, do we just do it, are we the only ones that do this? I'm not too sure. Well, I tell you why. All right. If you're a man on off the ball, and I know the fella you're talking about, I don't know his name because it's not worth fucking knowing, but I know him. He's an absolute bleeding nutsack. I know the fella you're talking about. If he'd have come out today and said, oh, brilliant, brilliant for Klopp in his last year, and then just goes to show, which the, the balanced media and coverage on Klopp is going, that win typifies your Klopp's Liverpool where no matter what, they found a way and he trusted and fucking every single last player in the squad and he got it done. It would have got little to no engagement. But that retweet's flying around, that's gone around WhatsApp groups all day and it's numbers and engagement and that's currency. Yeah. Because that's, that's all it is. That's what it is. Like, I don't... I, don't, I, I, I understand I some of that. I look around say it's fume and it's boiling piss but it's all just... There's a really good um, podcast that came out today and you should watch it. It's Mark Galbridge with your man... Um, Lawrence, who was on the True Jordy, and it's Mark Albridge just being himself and they're just having a chat. And hold they on, talk. hold on, hold on. Lawrence, 
that was on not the City fella. He's a Liverpool fella. He's, he's a Liverpool, Liverpool fan. He was a Phil He's actually got he's a good he's good skin. He's got um, long hair now, yeah. Right. He he had him on the he had him on that podcast and he was they were talking he left True Jordy all about True Jordy being an absolute fucking sausage. But he turned around and said, like, that's what it's become now. It's it's all about being provocative and, and, and getting engagement and it's it's not about kind of employing logic in, in conversations and and fucking do you know what Galbraith plays a bit of a character and he's on the one but he turns around and he goes that's what it all is now it's like De Bruyne comes back and has a good game and he's the, the best Premier League player of all time and then Galbraith was like the fella's making this video is 20 and talking about Gerard and Paul Scholes he says when Paul Scholes and Gerard were playing you were still up your mash chuff so you wouldn't even know <laughs> You wouldn't even know that, the, that that was his exact words. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. I've seen a bit of that. It's all got to do with it's all got to do with engagement, and and that's all it is. It's. Like, I agree with some of that, but I do find some of them. You, you know, you're looking you're looking at a load of them, and you're saying to yourself, "That's engagement." But there is some of them, Shani, where you look at them, and you go, "Only one of them." There's only one person. There's only one person who's fuming, right? There's only one person who's fucking seeding inside. Because he probably sat at home watching the game on Sunday, seeing the coverage, seeing the love in the day after, seeing all the traction it was getting, and going, "Oh, that's what it's like. That's what it's like to manage a club where it fucking matters." The only one who's rattled out of mall and not trying to look is Guardiola. Guardiola head lost. I don't care about Scotty one tonight. You could see him. He turned around there, going, "Liverpool are unstoppable. They look unstoppable." But oh, when we win, and nobody gave a fuck. When you win anything, Pep, nobody gives a fuck. Because you manage Man City. That's the God honest truth. Yeah. All right? You can't even... like People are saying, Neville, in fairness to Neville, Neville was uh, was spitballing about Liverpool after and, and, and how it's unbelievable what Klopp does and how he's the only manager in the world who can do it with players like that. The only one who was doing it and not looking for clicks and engagement but reacted because of emotional instability the lack of emotional intelligence was was Pep Guardiola. He was rattled. And he is rattled. And he's been rattled again for some time. He's going on about Liverpool months now again. And Klopp doesn't give a fuck about him. You bet your bollocks Klopp doesn't give a fuck about him. But he is rattled. He's fucking rattled. Well, I and, hope he's... I hope oh, he's... Um... Ahead. Tro- boys, tribalism makes God show you... Oh, no, no. I, 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 look, and I, I, I'll agree with you. I agree with you. If, if, if cunts... And I, I hate using the word. I actually love using the word, but so I, hate using, word. I hate using it on the channel because I know what fucking. Ah, is. look, sure. What do you look? It doesn't matter. If, if all they, if all they have is to kind of detract from from Liverpool winning trophies, then. Yeah, I know. I get, I get the whole thing where people say stuff like, "We genuinely do live in a generation where people just stay. People literally sit down, and what they do is they think about what they're going to say beforehand, and then they adjust it to." What can get the most reaction, the most traction, get me the most clicks, I'll make some money. That's fine, right? And if people want to be like that, that's the way the world is. They're not in the minority anymore. You know, they're in a very large majority at this stage. But I still think there's some people when you look at them and you go, the actual fume is rolling off you. You're not just saying this because, you know, you know you're getting engagement. I genuinely think... It, they it pours out of people. It just pours out of them. You can't. They, they can't help it. Like they genuinely can't help it. Um, but but that's how it is. But Emma, um, yeah, man, yeah, man Housen is one. The one ah, listen. Do you, know what, do you know what? No, no, I'm not gonna. Here, hold on. I'm not even giving you the award on him. This is the fella that turned around and said the Glazers was the worst thing to happen. You know, in the Munich disaster. Go no further and don't even mention <laughs> yeah, that. And, and is, is that the fella Rio really, Ferdinand? Uh, yeah, Rio, Rio was agreeing with him today. He, Rio's a big fucking coke-headed fucking dirty cunt. Don't be minding him. He's <laughs> bad stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you. The legend. <laughs> yeah, Rio, what are you doing with your fucking dying wife? Don't be mentioning these cunts, boys, honestly. They're <laughs> fucking mongrels. They're not worth um, wouldn't piss on the cunts if I was on fire and I had yeah, a no, but that's de- that's definitely clickbait uh, stuff without a shadow of a doubt. It's definitely clickbait stuff and, and I wouldn't listen. There's house and then there's another fella, um Coca Cola or something is his name. I can't fucking yeah, yeah, remember. Yeah. Uh, but do you know yeah, what do you just... know who I saw today and I actually gave credit and he, I normally hate him is your man Jason Cundy. 
I saw a clip of him and he was actually given kind of like a credit to Liverpool and to Klopp and stuff like that. So uh, Yeah, but the the thing about Jason Cundy is tomorrow he'll tell you the complete opposite because that'll be his, yeah, his agenda true. tomorrow. You know, um, I, I just want to know what I, uh, Gabby Agbar Lahore thinks of it all to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, don't say you're going to set Johnny off. Um, no, I'm not. Gabby, I'm not cause Gabby Agbar Lahore is probably still looking for the fivers that he was putting in the pack of the Walkers Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, come here. Before oh. we go, do we have a game, we have a game tomorrow. Um, Johnny Dunn says, Shawnee is pouring here. Yeah, he fucking oh, is. No, you have to say, um, I'm supposed to be going to bed now and you Yeah, I know, yeah. I know. Really <laughs> uh, sorry, Shani. Sorry, sorry, Shani. Sorry, Shani. Sorry, Shani. Um, I was lying all weekend. But before, before we go, um, <laughs> before we go, um, uh, you know, that game's over. There's another one tomorrow. And Klopp has said, like, hope I have a fucking team to put out at this stage. Um, but we're going into this Southampton I think don't really want this game either I think they're in a mad battle in the championship that's going to heat up really really quickly now and um, the, the end of the season is going to fly in for them because they usually play twice a week every fucking week but Emma when it comes down to it he has got enough players to pick a team there you'd hope he has one or two coming back that he gives minutes to but I want to win all four I want to go out and win this and I'd be quite confident wherever he puts out a winner anyway um, but the bigger game is definitely the weekend for us away. Yeah. Um, like, you'd like to think that Sabasloy and Nunes are close to coming back with the way they were doing the Grand National hurdles over yeah. people to get onto the pitch when we scored. Um, so, yeah, you'd like to get even, just a, just even two back. Um, I think it's going to probably go heavily on the lads that saw the game out uh, on Sunday. Um, I'd say maybe Simicast will start. Um, you might see like a Gomez Kwanzaa. I know Gomez played a, a, a good bit of the game on, on Sunday, but I still think you might see him in there. Kwanzaa. Um Kwanzaa. Yeah. yeah, he yeah, he only he only no, no. on no no Gomez played a lot Gomez, of the, sorry, yeah, but Gomez comes on after minutes, so. minutes so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um I think you might see them at the back. Bradley, I think you'll see at right back. Again, and then I don't know what way he's going to make up the midfield because does he put McAllister in? I don't know. I'd be, I'd probably go something like McConnell, Clark, maybe Gakbo, um, and then up front. Diaz Jesus doesn't Christ, play. Who do we have? Diaz now. Diaz probably only has one leg left. I'd say. Um, I don't know. Uh, Gordon, Kate Gordon, maybe, and not, uh, I don't know how to pronounce your man's name, Neo, Naomi or Naomi yes. or whatever. Um, and maybe dance, like, and I agree with you, he puts that out. And <laughs> why are you laughing for that? Brian O'Halloran says, Housing, <laughs> Housing is the image of Roz from Monsters Inc. Look it up. He also looks like a young delinquent Santi. <laughs> Sucks to be him. <laughs> Ross from Monsters Inc. is a fantastic show. Um, and I know that because I watched that film maybe a hundred times with the kids. But look, I think you're right. I think it's going to be a, a mixed match. And, and whoever finished the game probably has more chance of, chance of playing. But like, Shani, do we. My biggest thing on this is do we get a couple, of, a couple back? And I'm not talking to start the game and, you know, run them into the ground for 90. But. I wouldn't mind seeing Salah and Nunes and Sabazloy on the bench and coming on for half an hour. Nunes and Sabazloy are on the bench. I think think they could be on the bench. Look, whatever, boys, there's going to be fucking 11 or 12 lads who picked up winners' medals on Sunday. You're fucking out your tits if you think they're not buzzing, bouncing into play this year. And Phil should be rocking as well. So... I wouldn't be worried about, I think, any 11 week conjure up and proud tomorrow. And this is not to detract from Yoke. The only thing I don't want to see, <coughs> the only thing I don't want to see, is what? Is that fucking sausage in there. Oh, because if you have uh, mentioned that, it could happen. Yeah. If, Ad- if Adrian is in there, I'm not watching it. I'm telling you that now for free. <laughs> Look at the he's got, go he's got a, he'll party. watch the United stand with ha- House and McCullough instead. <laughs> You'll <laughs> hold that, that's made me off. I was in great fun. 
Anyway, uh, no, look, I don't know. I don't know who's going to play. <laughs> I don't even know if Adrian's registered. Oh, stop. Anyway, look, we're going to leg it because that's an hour. And uh, we, we said we'd do an hour. Um, it's been really good talking about Liverpool, um, annoying everybody, bringing all the young lads on um, and just winning games of football, winning cups. And in all seriousness, it's it's a day that all them players will remember for the rest of their life, regardless of what goes on in their career, whether it's a, a fantastic career, an average career, a failed career, you know, because it happens through injury and different different things. But that will stick with them for a long, long time. And um, it'll stick with all of us, I think, for a long, long time as well. Tenth League Cup for Liverpool. They changed the wall out there on Ramfield there. People got really annoyed about that as well. Oh, look at them changing the wall. Look, this, the next day. What do you want us to do? Leave it? Like they, they didn't ring up the fellow with the numbers and go, can you change the wall? And he went, oh, look, I'm up to my eyes. I'll be around you in about three weeks. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's not how it works. Liverpool Football Club ring. You just come down and do it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> people are going mad over that oh look at them changing already what do you want, do you want, do you want another week of the wall just look at annoying on it so you can console yourself before or just do the 10 overnight and don't tell anybody I was fucking cla- oh, I was brilliant anyway um, that that's that's about it um, before we go our fundraiser it, the link is in the description um, as I always say if everyone here watching donates one pound or one euro to that and everyone that downloads it tomorrow de- donates one pound or one euro to that and um, we'll piss this 10 grand but no one's to give me just the pounds or the euros so go on do it the link is in the description if you can't fine share it and tell people to do it get all the people you know that you know these fuckers you know and go that fella's minted send it to him or her and go listen you're minted Put a load of money in there, will you? And, and put my name under it. And everyone will feel great about themselves. Anyway, um, do that. Phil's link is also in there as well. He's done that five mad races he's doing. He's training really hard in fairness to him. And that's for the Laura Lynn Hospice. So if you can give a few quid to that, please do so. Football Prize's latest offering is uh, Nunes. Uh, signed and framed Nunes jersey. But there's loads of other things from the likes of, um, I think, Trent Gakbo. Tiago, there's loads of stuff going on in that that raffle. So the link is in there as well. There's only about a hundred tickets left on that as well. Try your name in to three ninety five a ticket. It's worth it because if you win it, it's, it's, it's whopper prize and there's about twenty prizes altogether. So the link is in the description for that. Um, what was I going to say? Tomorrow morning we'll try get on to you tomorrow morning at ten a.m. Uh, tomorrow night we will have the match reaction. Thursday we will have the greatest, the latest in the greatest series. And we'll be back then on the Saturday for reaction to Forest. And we'll be back on Sunday then with more reaction to everything else that's going on. But on Sunday we won't be mentioning McCola, Housen, Rio Ferdinand, uh, Adrian, none of them, right? Because fucking hell. Imagine, do you know, imagine how we do, right? Don't let Keith watch this. Bring him back on Sunday and just start saying these names. Watch Shawnee go mad and Keith's in there going, the fuck's going on here? <laughs> but um, no, it's been an absolute pleasure as always. Thank to the boys for turning up and coming on on a Tuesday night. Emma, anything else before we go? No, just a point. I think Alan Burke said earlier on that the best result from Sunday was me not losing my phone, but we all know that I lost it for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, honestly, he, he, he wakes up on Monday yesterday, wasn't it? Wakes yeah. up yesterday, where's my phone? I said, I don't know. I'm nearly sure you were lying in the bedroom last night, you know, looking at the phone. No, no, I don't know where it is. Where did you put it? I can't remember. So we literally got up, pulled the fucking room apart, goes downstairs, has the fella downstairs ringing all the staff that were working at 3 <laughs> o'clock in the morning. He has them ringing them all to ask them, did he see a phone, right? In the meantime, he collects his glasses from behind the bar, goes back upstairs and he says, right, it has to be in this fucking room. It was literally at the end of the bed. You know where the mattress meets the headboard? It was literally just sitting there. And he had the place up ended. And here he was. Well, I was kind of pretending that it wasn't bothering me, but like, me bothering me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, oh, he's fucking insane. He's insane, honest to God. Um, if, I, if I'm going to Liverpool again, I'm applying for a bus pass because I'm his carer from now on. That's, <laughs> That's how bad it got. Um, and you can try clear your name, but not now. We're going. Shani, anything else before we go? No, we're all good. Yeah, happy. Enjoy that. Yeah. Delighted. Yeah. Oh, well, um, when that registered letter comes through the door, Shani from Rio <laughs> Fair, and solicitor, give us a shout, will you? I might go to court for a big bag of bleeding uh, hard boiled sweets and watch it all unfold. Oh, hey, the one last thing. Yeah. Apparently, uh, Luis Diaz's dad was on the train 
with a bag of cans on the way back up to Liverpool. Of course, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. No wonder the fucking, no wonder the mafia gave him back. I tell you, he's a bleeding head wrecker. <laughs> head wrecker. <laughs> yeah, I'll bend them back there and give him out. Oh, I'm not done with this fucking easy. I don't he's even fucking want to. Drinking, drinking his needles out of house and home. He, fucking yeah, hell. Yeah, he's wrecking his head. <laughs> I've never seen someone so upset after a cup final that Johnny lost on his outstanding game. Johnny, how was your Sunday? He's went out with a oh. few beers. Oh, I was, I was, oh, I was great for this. It looked good, Craig. Yeah. Uh, oh, I was out just the water spot by the way, but like, it's always, always about the company. You know what I mean? And the best part of it was like it's a consortium of the boys who'll be making the big trip. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we we'll be doing the big shop, so to speak. We doing well, the big but, shop. About fifteen of us will be doing the. Big oh, shop. Uh, oh, it was a great night. Uh, Birdie was there. Paddy was there. Alan was there, my other brother Gizmo Keith was there, um, Carl O'Shea was there from your parish. Yeah. And we had a fucking great night. And we end, ended up in Devitts, which is always fucking. It's always a good sign, isn't it? Yeah. In Devitts, it's, yeah. It's one good beginner at, laughing at people. Yeah, that's all you want. Not only Guinness. Right. Yeah. Some people to laugh at. Right. Yeah, well, I, I'll, one, 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 I'll say one thing that you, there was one fella in the middle of the Camden and He's the maddest Liverpool fan I've ever seen in my life. He stood in front of the screen like that every time Chelsea made a substitution going, Get off the pitch. <laughs> <laughs> he, like, you can't see them, right? And he's on a mad one for the whole game, right? And then Chelsea score and then it's real offside and he's all about roaring in the Chelsea fans' face, right? This fella is kicking off on him. And then Gizmo jumps up once, turns around and goes, For fuck's sake, referee, that's a disgrace. And your man turns around and goes, Gizmo. Will you relax? <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop. stop. <laughs> Roy, we're out of here. Paul wants to know what's the dropsy story. I'll tell you another time. Okay, great. Time. He said it in the chat. Look, Gizmo oh. getting given by the mad bastard. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing stuff. Ah, Gizmo probably deserved it. Right. That's it. We will talk to you tomorrow at some stage. Um, hit the like on your way out. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to become a member, do that as well. Four euro a month. Loads of member shows and all that messing. Talk to you in a bit. Over and out.